Greetings! In today's video, I'll be taking a look at another artist-curated watercolor palette. I've talked about the Schminke and Hazel Sewan palette, and the special Schminke palette that Wet Paint had for sale earlier this year. I love these types of palette because I feel there's a lot to learn from observing and working with someone else's favorite colors. This one is the collaboration between Sennelier and Billy Shawl, the renowned botanical artist. She picked 12 Sennelier colors that she felt were the most useful colors to have when creating botanical paintings. The paints are the tube versions and they come in a metal tin made especially for tubes. The cover and inner lid can both be used for mixing and preparing the paint, but the tray for the tubes is part of the main compartment. It cannot be removed. I already had a plastic palette with the paints in it, but I went and added a lot more paint. I prefer to work from larger blobs of paint. I'm not a botanical artist at all. I don't have the patience for it, or the level of focus and precision required. Botanical illustration is a serious thing, as the subject painted has to be scientifically accurate. I don't have the experience to say if that's a palette setup that would be efficient for botanical illustration, but it's gonna work for the painting I'll do with these paints. This palette comes with no green and no earth tones at all. It has three yellows, one orange, four reds, one purple, and three blues. It's definitely one of the most unusual selection I've seen so far. The colors included are cobalt blue, French ultramarine, phthalocyanine blue, lemon yellow, Sennelier yellow deep, quinacridone gold, Sennelier red, red orange, Helios Purple, Alizarin Crimson Lake, Rose Mather Lake, and Dioxazine Purple. As I'm pretty unfamiliar with such a palette, I made a mixing chart with these paints. These 12 colors make for an amazing array of bright colors, which is great for painting the vivid hues of plants and flowers. It's always easier to start from bright mixes, and mute them by introducing a complementary color than the other way around. To test the paints, I sketched a flower bouquet from a reference picture. I proceeded to lay down a first pass of the colors to establish where each of the flowers was located. When that was dry, I did another pass to add more depth and richness to the colors. I did a third and final pass over the dry painting to add a bit more to the final sketch. I really loved working with these colors. I find that Sennelier from the tube rewets almost too easily and always yields beautiful, vibrant colors. I had no issues with the layering either. This paper is a multimedia paper made from cotton, 
and it took every layer well without blooming. Sennelier is often said to be a good paint for botanical art as it allows a lot of layering, and my experience really goes along with this so far. After painting this first demo, I started wondering about the color selection and realized that it might be confusing. Are these colors only good for painting flowers and brightly colored subjects? Is this a super specific palette that would require having another different palette for other subjects? I know that any primary triad will let you paint everything and that this set is basically a lot of triads in the same set, but I wanted to experiment and see it for myself. I searched for a very grey and earthy reference photo and found this one of a derelict barn in the winter. I proceeded to sketch it and to paint it out, to see how I'd fare using these super bright colors to paint something faded and neutral. Turns out, it was fairly easy. I could see from my mixing chart that the cobalt and the orange mix into something fairly close to grey. I used this as the basis for all the grey. As for all the neutral and earthy colors, I just followed the basic color theory mixing rules and was able to mix browns and beiges and darker greys. I had no issues with layering here too, or laying down the wetter sky color. Overall, this is a really great palette, full of really good paints. It's excellent if you want to push yourself to mix colors instead of relying on convenience colors. Personally, I'd add cobalt teal to this palette, and it would be perfect for my preferences. The Sennelier paints from Tube deliver an incredible color load and are very easy to rewet and layer. You can get just about any color you want through mixing, as this palette is full of various primary colors. I can't say how well it fits the needs of a botanical artist, as I'm not one, but it's a good palette for any artist, not just those with a botanical inclination. Also of note, I have one of Billy Shawell's books, and in it she presents a color palette from the Windsor & Newton professional range. Many colors are similar between both sets, but they are not quite the same. Also, the palette in the book has 15 colors, while the Sennelier set has 12. I just wanted to include this to show that her color choices are fairly consistent, regardless of brand. So, what are your thoughts on this palette? Can you see yourself using these colors to paint what you regularly paint? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, bye bye.